Welcome to video number 21 in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan McGahey, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. Development is what brings a tourism plan to fruition. It turns raw potential into a working tourism industry by adding value to resources and creating the conditions for success. As development occurs, the tourism industry begins to materialize and provide the vital components, such as the four operating sectors, that are necessary to attract and satisfy tourists in a profitable, sustainable, and competitive manner. It means the creation of infrastructure and superstructure to support these sectors, as well as the institutional elements required to manage and promote the destination, plus tourism legislation, marketing plans, funding mechanisms, investment incentives, education and training, and much more. It also involves risk and commitment on the part of all the destination stakeholders. UNWTO defines Sustainable Tourism Development, STD, as tourism that takes full account of its current and future economic, social, and environmental impacts, addressing the needs of visitors, the industry, the environment, and host communities. The forerunner of sustainability was unbridled resource development, tempered somewhat by conservation. The 1972 United Nations Conference on the Human Environment brought the issue of sustainability to the world stage with its Declaration of 26 Principles. The 1987 Brundtland Report propelled sustainability into the global spotlight, and the 1992 Rio Summit, attended by 172 nations, produced Agenda 21, a global plan of action to promote the urgency of sustainable development. And indeed, in the 21st century, all forms of tourism development must be sustainable, although greed, corruption, and expediency challenge its application and effectiveness. Much of tourism development depends on strong public-private sector cooperation. The government's main role is to stimulate development by creating favorable conditions for private sector initiatives to succeed. A guiding principle is that government should never do anything that private sector businesses can do. It mainly supports private sector development efforts through activities such as planning, regulation, impact assessments, investment incentives, and infrastructure development. Because governments own many natural resources, such as parkland and seashores, and cultural resources, such as museums and historical sites, they often manage popular tourism attractions. They may also own and operate transportation services, such as airlines and railroads, including their terminal facilities. Although the foundation of tourism development is dependent on the activities of various government agencies, it is the private sector entrepreneurial activities that develop, own, and operate most of the tourist facilities and services within a destination. If tourism is to become an economic engine for a destination, it is the private sector that builds the engine and drives it down the track. Private sector businesses generate ideas and create projects, invest their own capital, negotiate for investment incentives, prepare business and marketing plans, and take the financial risks that are inherent in business development. Then, based on their management skills, businesses either reap the profits or suffer the losses. As stated in video number three, Golden Rule of Tourism, the only reason to develop tourism anywhere is to benefit the local people. So the entire process of destination planning and development must take into account community benefits and support. It is the local people who create the destination ambiance, serve as owners, managers, and staff of tourism businesses, and elect the political leaders who make government decisions that impact tourism development. Special interest groups, NGOs, and nonprofit organizations also generate support or opposition to tourism development, so their position on specific tourism projects should be clearly understood and carefully considered. Product development flows from the destination's vision and policy statements, its tourism planning goals, and its tourism master plans. Ideas for project development are often included within the master plans or they are generated by private sector entrepreneurs. Private sector projects are expected to make a profit, such as resorts and theme parks, while public sector projects are normally considered essential for tourism development, such as tourist information centers, human resource development, and infrastructure, including utilities. 
All projects must be carefully analyzed for triple bottom line acceptability and are subject to government approval at various stages. A pre-feasibility study is conducted by the government, a developer, or a consultant to determine if a project is viable and an economic feasibility analysis is justified. An economic feasibility analysis might be conducted by any of the above or by a lender or investor who would have a substantial financial interest at stake. The main purpose of an economic feasibility analysis is to determine if the project will have a sufficient return on investment. Questions of equity, capital cost, debt, interest rates, revenue, and cash flow are also important. Among the components of an economic feasibility analysis are the project description, site analysis, market analysis, financial analysis, and possibly a cost-benefit analysis, each using specifically designed surveys, indicators, and calculators. The purpose of an environmental impact analysis is to identify environmental attributes such as land and water or flora and fauna or any other factors that might impede the approval of a tourism project or its subsequent development and success. The objective is to minimize any adverse impacts on the environment, resolve any conflicts, propose effective environmental safeguards, and determine the physical and biological acceptability of the project. EIAs are normally required by governments, performed by consultants, and paid by developers. Public hearings are often held to gather community input, including individuals and groups who have concerns about the project. Not long ago, mass tourism was the basic model used by destinations around the world. Natural and cultural resources were plentiful, and the primary impact of concern was economic. As tourism grew and negative socio-cultural and environmental impacts became major concerns, the world discovered sustainability. But mass tourism still exists. With mass tourism, planning is minimal, non-existent, or oriented solely toward increasing arrival numbers. A mentality of anything goes that makes money prevails. Mass tourism is mostly characterized by hordes of tourists, haphazard development, architectural pollution, diminished natural beauty, decreased quality of life of residents, short-term gain followed by inevitable decline of destination quality, and manipulation of the community by outside investors who abandon the destination when profits fall too low. Sustainable tourism means low-impact tourism, and even better, human-scale tourism, which offers a type of tourism experience that each person can personally relate to, rather than being treated as just a number, another customer, or a person with dollar signs in their eyes. Most destinations throughout the world have been introduced to sustainable tourism, and many of them have made an honest effort to incorporate its principles into their planning, management, and operations. Since each destination has its own background, products, and tourism goals, the concept of low-impact tourism goes by many names, such as responsible tourism, nature tourism, green tourism, indigenous tourism, endemic tourism, eco-tourism, adventure travel, village tourism, slow tourism, and many others. Regardless of the name, each of them intends for tourists to be able to leave positive impacts wherever they go and whatever they do. Development winds up the tourism industry and makes it go. For the future of the industry and the planet, sustainable development is the course that destinations must follow. Sustainable development walks the fine line espoused in the traditional conflict between development and conservation as it attempts to do both. As such, it continues to evolve and help destinations prosper according to their own unique circumstances. Now I invite you to watch video number 22, Tourism Investment Incentives. Thank you.